I'm Bart Herbison, Executive Director of the Nashville Songwriters Association, and this week for the Nashville, Tennessean, the story behind the song is the most beautiful girl with Hall of Fame songwriter, Mr. Roy Burke. Thanks, Bart. Who was she? <laughs> well, Nora Wilson and I, I, I work for Mercury Records in Chicago, and Nora was an artist that they sent up from, a smash artist they sent up from Nashville to do some promotion up there. So Nora and I got together and uh, we went around and we uh, we had uh, we went out one night and then came back home and we started uh, the most beautiful not the most beautiful girl actually we started a song called Hey Mister. Now we've been out drinking the night before and I, my wife may have figured in there somewhere but she was she was a uh, she was I guess, upset. <laughs> so, uh, Noro and I uh, started working on uh, Hey Mister, and we wrote that, and he went back to Nashville, and about, uh, oh, three, four months later, put it out as a single, Hey Mister. It got some airplay, but it really didn't do that great. So, uh, by that time, uh, about a year later, I moved to Man Nashville, working for Mercury in Nashville, and uh, uh, nothing was ha I mean, nothing was happening. And I, I knew Billy, and I knew Noro. And, and now the, we're bringing Billy Sherrill into well, the picture, the legendary Billy. Sherrill. He's not in it quite okay. yet, uh, but but I, I I knew Gallico and Noro. They both were great to me in getting my career started. But they they did a demo on some songs, and I, I was really grateful, and still am, obviously. But uh, it seems like about a year later. Noro and Billy got together and uh, put the magic on this thing. And uh, it became the most beautiful girl. It's the other song. It's, it's Hey Mister morphing into okay. Most Beautiful Girl. And Noro cut it on Joe Stampley and uh, kept saying to Billy, Billy, you need to put this out on Rich, you know. And Billy was reluctant, but uh, as I understand it, uh, the uh, the girls over at Columbia at the time just ragged on him until finally he put it out, and he put it out, and you know, the rest is history. The first time you heard Charlie's cut, you remember that? What'd you think? I thought fantastic. Yeah. It's great. So it, it just sounded different to me. First, the song's different. The song's semi-conversational. The melody really moves in some places you wouldn't necessarily, that aren't predictable. It was obviously a huge hit. Charlie had already done, I think, Behind Closed Doors. Yes. And he needed that song. Charlie was one of the original Sun artists, and everything he did was great, but I think that cemented, in my opinion, his legacy in music, The Most Beautiful Girl. And Don't Be Humble. You no, I think those two songs. Yeah. I mean, Behind Closed Doors was a huge hit, huge hit. And we were coming off of a giant. And I think our song just melodically kind of worked its way into overseas, mm -hmm. U.S. and overseas. I mean, uh, it was a big hit, and it was a big hit all over the world. And it was a all all levels of media at, the, at that time. It was huge. My mother used to say... Uh, that uh, one of the reasons why it's, it's as big as it is is that it's one that her, her old lady friends could love and listen to and, and say, yeah. This week, Hall of Fame songwriter Rory Burke, the story behind the song is about the most beautiful girl for the Nashville Tennessean. And we'd love to hear a verse and a chorus of it, Rory. I'll be happy to, Bart. <laughs> Hey, did you happen to see the most beautiful girl in the world? And if you did, was she crying, crying? And hey, if you happen to see the most beautiful girl that walked out on me, Tell her I love her 
tell her I need